All right, so this is Keith Arts. He is a part of the Colored Pencil Society here in the Seattle area. Um, this is his work, Adoration, and we're gonna chat a little bit with him today. Hi, Keith. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you start making art? When did you start making art? Uh, I came into making art late in life because I had a life and, and um, didn't know that that's what I needed. I'm a, a very right brain person living in a left brain world and yeah. it makes a big difference as to what I do and what I can't do. Um, I took a watercolor class in high school, at a, as a night class in high school and fell in love with it fell, and then couldn't get back to it until after I'd retired. Okay. Which was about 45 years. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, uh, I uh, took another watercolor class and I just fell in love with it again and then spent as much time as I could figuring out what I needed to do to make things work. So uh, watercolor was my first love. And then I met Sheila Theodoratis, a friend of mine, and she's, well, I took a class from her and then I fell in love all over again. So I used the, I used the two in combination quite a bit. So Okay. Yeah. That yeah. Was that was my next question, I guess, is you do use colored, I mean, this is a colored pencil show, but I noticed a lot of colored pencil artists will use like mixed media to create their pieces. So they don't just use yes. one thing. Yes. Uh, the, the piece that you have behind you is all, is all colored pencil. Wow. And, and that, uh, if I may, just a little bit, it's on a toned paper. The, the, the tan tone that you see is the color of the paper. And I just put in shadows and the highlights with, I think I used three different colored pencils to do that. Wow. And I'm, um, I'm gonna focus in on it here while we chat about it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, just a oh, simple piece. There, oh, that's great. Oh, looks nice. Yeah, right, <laughs> up close. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, tell, um, tell us a little bit about it. Well, first of all, when I took the picture, uh, the baby was only two days old. That's my wow. older grandson and my daughter. And, uh, the baby was just there, you know, and not making much effort to do anything, couldn't. But my daughter was trying to talk to him, trying to get a smile out of him. And then she got this little smirk on her face. And I, I, and I said, oh, that's great. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And she says, I can't. He just pooped all over my arms. Oh, no. <laughs> so that is not a, actually an adoration, although it looks like it. It does. <laughs> it sure does. Uh, anyway, so... Uh, and then, and then uh, I finally got a whiff and I just said, okay, that's enough. Yeah. But this, this picture just, it struck me as being, there's an emotion there that is so strong mm -hmm. from her that um, I tried to render it in, in the old style at using just as few colors as I could yeah. to, uh, to uh, get the essence of the, of the, emotion that's there rather than doctored up with color. It was from originally, it was a color photograph, but I decided yeah. to make it a uh, sepia type. Okay. And you use that tone paper kind of as a base. Was it a really light colored? Well, it was, it was the color of the, of the, of the upper arm. It's that, it's okay. that tan, that kind of a straw colored. And yeah. you'll notice that on top of the child's head, there's dark, hair and then there's some light hair that's two different colors of pencil and okay. then black and then black for my daughter's hair she was upset that I put all the gray in but yeah. uh, <laughs> that's a part of your life too though you got to include everything <laughs> that's right that's right they're all 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 wrinkles are, are required I love and, it well it's yeah. really, I thought it was fantastic as far as those kind of details because it really translates well especially to the emotion like the just the subtle you're just seeing the side of her face but just that subtle um like perkiness to her cheekbone that was yes. what got me that was i could see the front of her face and i almost could feel that feeling that she was feeling towards it's, the, it's the muscles it's the muscles in the face that are smiling yes. are actually are actually trying to keep the, the smell away right <laughs> a mixture of both probably <laughs> yeah. That's great. yes I so, love this piece. It's just great. How did thank you, you let's say here? So you did black. What do you think I the did, most difficult part of this piece was for you? 
most difficult part was um, her hands. Mm. And, and uh, because to me, ha hands are very hard to do. And mm, you, yeah. you can end up with six fingers if you aren't careful. <laughs> yes. And, and um, she, she has beautiful hands and she, her she has fingernails that are just perfect, I think. Of course, she's my daughter, but then, but then, just the way the way she has one hand uh, over the other, I wanted to make sure that that the creases in the in the uh, knuckles yeah. and the cuticle and all that was showing properly, um, and I think it worked. I had less success, I think, on the baby's fingers, but they were so darn small oh, that yeah. it was hard. Um, but uh, uh, I think that to me that was that was. I did that first to get it out of the way, get the fingers out of the way, and then then I did the rest of it. But mm -hmm. um, to try and keep the baby's face as soft as possible, I put as little color on it as possible. Yeah. And then on her face, I even have some of the light hair at the on the side of the cheek that she didn't care about either, but it's there. Yeah. But you know, it's the the texture difference is is. Uh, it's important. Probably, the, probably the largest it'll ever be. The child will never have skin like that again. And I tried very hard on the face, in particular, to keep uh, it very pure. And yeah, I de definitely think that came across. And especially how you, um, this is a great example of using your darks well, right? So really, yeah. using that dark, dark background as a contrast, so that like really crisp line of the baby's face is right, right. No distractions. Well, I'm I'm very pleased with it, and um, and uh, it it is one of I, I do a lot of portraits of the family, not many of other people, but of the family. And I got I have several in the in my my uh, studio that I've done, but but this one is the one that I I like the most. I really do because it it has it has the emotion that, that the others are lacking. I think so. Yeah, well, it's, I think it definitely, your emotion definitely comes across on that piece, especially as you talk about it. You get the emotion of knowing that it's your daughter and your, is it your oldest grandson? Is that what you said? My oldest grandson who's now 21. See, that's even better. Yeah. So that, what a great, what a great memoriam to that, um, that part of your life. Yes. Okay. So what's the next question here? Let's go with what inspires your art? Um... I, it used to be that my, my inspirations came from everyday life things. I was inspired at first by color, saturated color. So a lot of my, I did a lot of still lifes of, of uh, crystal because I was fascinated by crystal, how a clear piece of glass can have so much color that comes from all over the room. Yeah, and I was fascinated by that. So I, I did a whole series of of uh, of crystal um, subject matter with different things of color, flowers, Easter eggs, um, anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were technically they were very good. Inspiration wise, um, they, I, I was inspired by them, but they were far from being inspirational. If you know what I mean, uh, they were they were still lives. Yeah. Know? How do you get how do you get enthused about still life? Yeah. <laughs> but I I did that um, because I'm a realistic painter. I paint almost um, photorealistically because for one reason I worked at Boeing to get through school. I worked at Boeing on the originals 727 drafting oh, wow. uh, originals where I had to be within accurate within two hundredths of an inch from the center of a pencil line to the center of a pencil line. So it's hard for me to relax and yeah. say, oh, that's good enough. Yeah. You know? So um, I, I, uh, I paint realistically because I paint from photographs. And um, until recently, I would say that my paintings were inspired, but not inspirational, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Recently, I've been, I found that 
trying to do, trying to get light, which is what I was after before, uh, to be my vehicle for, for inspiration. Um, everybody's trying to do light and it's, it's very important to do that. But, but light without emotion is, is light without emotion. And so I've recently been trying to do things that are more like this painting where there's a, a connection of some kind that the viewer can see and feel themselves. Um, and it's hard to do that with inanimate objects. Yeah. And I, so, see, I see your inspiration versus inspirational. Like, right. Like, right. Yeah. So recently I've been working on, for the last four years, I've been working on a project, a project that is full size watercolor paintings of okay. people. Uh, and, and, uh, they are of homeless people in their own situations, trying to show, uh, the, uh, as, what's the word I want, um, as, uh, humanely and inspirationally as I can, the conditions that they have to live in. Yeah. And documenting. You're like yes. documenting their every day. Right, right. Yeah. And, and, uh, the, I've, I've gotten, I, I'm emotionally, I'm, I can't do anymore. I mean, it, it yeah. takes, it takes a lot out of me to do it. I have one more that I have half finished and it's over at a friend's house in storage because I can't work on it. It's too big for my studio now. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's watercolor. That's what you said. It's a, it's a watercolor mounted on plywood, a oh, full size wow. person. Sorry. Urinating on a wall. Wow. <laughs> and this, and the wall is made of brick and it's yeah. all, all the uh, perspective, but there'll be signs that are kind of floating around that say, uh, no, uh, cause, uh, Restrooms for customers only, or oh, okay. the attendant for key, and it's entitled "No job, no home, no place to go." Yeah, and that's exactly the problem. You know, yeah. there's no public restrooms. So, uh, anyway, the meaning can be so graphic, but no, that's okay. that's the type of thing that I've been working on. Yeah. Okay. And um, like I say, I'm getting emotionally and so involved in it that that uh, i i had to take a break and so yeah. my next series let me hear about that yeah please my next series uh, i've started all, i've just begun is a series on mental health okay trying to depict visually what somebody with a mental illness experiences a very heavy you seem just from talking with me now you seem like you get very attached to your pieces so that seems like a very heavy I, heavy i do thing to, to go over. well i i uh, this one i'm very attached to because i've had i have a um a 32 year history of of uh, major de uh, depression myself okay and i am on a medication now that has for the last nine years has kept me out of the hole and I'm happy for the first time in 32 years able to kind of look at it from a different perspective right yeah That's yeah great. and I and uh, part of the reason I'm doing this is because mental illness is always has in the past has always been considered a a uh, um, taboo <laughs> well yeah I, what's the word again I'm I'm losing it um, <laughs> a social or a um, Oh, what's the word I want? Sorry, uh, but it's a, it's a uh, uh, character flaw. Oh, okay, a social character. When it, when in fact it's a medical, it's a, it's a chemical imbalance. Yeah. Like diabetes, and you'd never think of somebody having diabetes as having a character flaw. Exactly. But I found out that in my, in my family background, there's a big long history of, of mental illness. And they didn't have the medica medications that, that we do now. And so yeah. I'm probably the first one to have survived it. Wow. So I have a very deep um, need to do that series and, and uh, on schizophrenia and 
depression and bipolarism and all of the, all of the, all the ones I can muster up. Yeah, one well, that so many people experience too. I feel like that kind of uh, subject matter will touch a lot of people too. I if I can if I do it right, it will. If I don't, it's just yeah. going to be a bunch of. Stuff. Well, you know what? Even <laughs> yeah. if it speaks to one person, I see a great value in that. So right. Yeah. And this time I'm doing, it's going to be a combination of, of cut paper. It's going to be three-dimensional. It's going to have uh, a watercolor and colored pencil in, combine, in combination. It's going to be a whole bunch of different things that, uh, that the media is going to be varied, quite okay. varied. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. I got some things I have to complete first and then I can really get at it full time. Yeah. But. Well, that sounds, that sounds like a great kind of direction to take too, because it's, I mean, in your piece here, you just, the detail and that connection, even though whoever looks at this won't see your daughter and her son specifically, they'll still feel connected to it because of whatever they have on in their life. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, it, and with, with still lives, it's, you know, if you're not interested in pheasants or, or dead birds, you know. Cornucopias. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Okay. Cornucopias of fruit. You know, yep. it's kind of hard to become emotional about that. It is. And you know what? It just, you just, like I said, you never know who it's going to touch. So. That's right. That's right. So. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's, I think we kind of talked, this the next question was, what aspects of your background make your art unique? Um, well, that's a, that's a part of it, I think. Yeah. Uh, I have, I have a need. And I don't, I don't mean just, um, uh, I mean, I, I have to create every day yeah. to keep the, the black hole from forming again in my brain. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's really more therapy than for me than it is for whatever comes out of it. Yeah. So I'm, and at my age, I'm, I'm able to paint because I want to and what I want to, and I can paint realistically without having fellow artists say, well, why don't you loosen up some? Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know how. I've tried and it doesn't yeah. work and it, it isn't me. So yeah. I paint realistically and I don't care whether I ever get into another show or not because that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I need to do it. Uh, and um, uh, it's, it's very definitely a part of my therapy that I, that I do it. So got to be doing something with my hands all the time. Yeah. Well, it's definitely, I think it's, you're probably not the only one that that kind of applies to, right? Using the art as therapy. There's so many different, No. what a, what a wonderful uh, thing to be able to explore that part of yourself. Yes, it is. It is. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, psychiatrist told me once that everybody, all artists, whether they're dancers or singers or painters or writers or whatever, the creative side is the right side of the brain and we are, we are predominantly right-sided living in a left brain world. Yeah. So we're constantly under stress, just trying to get along, trying to balance the damn checkbook. I'm sorry, the checkbook. <laughs> just trying to breathe every day normally. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm glad. I'm sure glad that uh, that's a, uh, you don't have to think about breathing. You do it automatically. Otherwise right. I'd probably exactly. die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, well, that's fantastic. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut us off for the interview portion, um, just because I feel like we tackled all of the things, especially about your piece here. Okay, good. I appreciate, appreciate you talking with us. and um, if it's, been, it's been a pleasure. You don't, I don't often get a chance to, to uh, talk to people about why I do it. You know? It's great, right? It yeah. feels good. It's part of <laughs> it why does. artists create, I think. Right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Keith's work will be up until October 3rd, along with a bunch of other Colored Pencil Society members. Um, and come check it out if you can. So thank you, Keith. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.